Hell yeah, what's up guys? It's Cruz Pike. My friends call me Big C. Back in action today, I'm back using the heartbeat tool, H.KI or HKI as George says, and I got some really important, some really good moments I want to share with you. Now, the moments are from a video by CoffeeZilla, and he is a big YouTuber. You probably already seen him, and if you uh, you, you probably know him, and if you, do, if you don't know him, you've probably seen a video of his and you didn't know it was him. Guys, he's got like what? Four million, three and a half million subs. But here's the thing. He did a video today that I think everybody should watch, especially if you're taking advice from YouTubers and especially in the financial industry uh, particularly. But here's the thing, guys. He talks about the Yada savings debacle that's currently going around right now. A lot of people invested a lot of money into Yada and Yada did not play fair. They, they've made, they basically confiscated the money they've turned their company from a financial tech app or a financial tech company into a bloody casino and he goes through all the details and also talks about how you got to be careful with youtube influencers and particularly youtube influencers that pitch financial products financial apps and uh, anyways guys he explains it amazingly well we're going to go through it chronologically ordered here guys starting at the zero second mark join me as we go into the yada savings debacle with coffeezilla all right so the first step to use heartbeat of course is to go to h.ki link will be in the description below and i have my own account so i'm just going to go over here to the left side i'm going to click on my heartbeat and then i'm going to click on moments so these are my last moments that i just made here and i've actually got 16 of them maybe uh, 17 moments here so we're going to go through these pretty quickly. The first five or six minutes of his video is incredibly succinct. And I mean, he gets right down to business. The last six or seven minutes, uh, he brings in a guest speaker and he discusses a few things. And while it's interesting, it might be interesting only to a very select uh, group of people that understand, you know, how finance uh, and banks and fi fintech companies are, are combined. So here we go. The first one here is Yada Savings starting at the zero second mark. Today we're talking about a bank promoted by YouTubers that's now become a casino and users can't get their money out. Yeah. This video is sponsored by Yada Savings. Yada, Y-O-T-T-A. Yada Savings? The Yada Savings app. Maybe you saw a couple people talk about this. Yes, I have seen people talk about Yada recently. Yeah. Hey, my name's Daniel. Um... So there we go. We're starting it off here. He talks about, he shows all these different YouTubers that have influence, or pardon me, are influencers, pardon me, that are promoting this product and then you know at the end of the video here or the last few moments he's going to talk about the moral uh, the gray line that i guess these types of influencers are straddling and of course he goes on to state that influencers could never have known that this company would turn into a casino and lock their money up and all the inf and all the intricacies that goes with it but here we go so we're going to skip forward now to the second moment where he talks about this become a lottery and gamified savings Yada Savings advertised itself as a no-lose lottery for yeah. YouTubers, where you'd get a lottery ticket by saving money rather than spending it. Right. It's called Gamified Savings, and some took it beyond a sponsorship and bought equity in the company because they liked the idea that much. The most viral example of this was Graham Stephan, who claimed that I bought a bank. I decided to invest an undisclosed amount, and now I can officially say I am a small owner in Yada Bank. Now these videos mm -hmm. are deleted, as Yada has become more than a harmless savings app, and right. users can't get their money out. There it is. So the apps morphed from, yeah, a harmless savings app to a app that you can't get your money out. He said it better than I could possibly. All right, so let's skip forward a little bit here, and he talks about how he made a video in 2022 calling them out. And I think his video is called Most Evil Business. So let's take a look. Business is part of me. So let's, it was a roundup. Let's take a look at that. They made a brief appearance in a video called The Most Evil Business in the World. And for some Yikes. reason, they didn't like the cameo. They said, quote, given these false claims, we would like you to issue a statement in a video clarifying that your claim that Yada is a scam is false and misleading. Right. So now you're going to see how big a cojones this guy's got. Because when we skip forward to a minute 50 here, just a few seconds forward. Yeah, he didn't play ball. But I found the next bit a bit more baffling. They tell me, quote, you could also conduct an interview with Adam Molis, the co-founder and CEO of Yada, if you wish, which I found odd. Either way, I decided to today take them up on their offer. Two, two years later. <laughs> I like this guy. Anyways, yeah, he takes them up. And uh, shockingly, uh, yeah, well, you'll see. Two years later, 
When I checked back in on Yada and found customers' accounts have been frozen and their website looked more like a casino than a no-lose lottery. Yeah, that doesn't look like a lottery. That doesn't look like a savings account app to me. Like, that's just crazy. Anyway, uh, let's go forward to 217 and see what he has to say about that. Now, honestly, I was shocked by this. This is the same company that's saying, play the no-lose lottery, regular lotteries or scams. They prey on innocent people. Now they're offering gambling. So of course, I reached out to the CEO and he told me Yada is not actually gambling. Right. Quote, we decided to pivot the business into sweepstakes earlier this year. Sweepstakes is not gambling. We worked extensively with lawyers in the space to build out the program. Yeah, as soon as you have to bring in lawyers, guys, you know and I know that yeah, something, something smells funny here. Now, I don't know which lawyer told Yada Blackjack isn't gambling, but it's time to get your money back. It's gambling, everyone. Anyways, let's skip forward a little bit here where he explains how Yada Cash works and how they found a workaround. This is amazing. The CEO says you can't actually buy Yada Cash, right. but this is a very sneaky claim because one way to get Yada Cash is by purchasing tokens on the app. These tokens are pointless, except that they come with free Yada Cash. Now, this is so bad, it's unbelievable. The fact that he has, you know, shown us just how awful these guys must be to do that. Like, I mean, I could buy, you know, a bunch of fake points and then redeem them for cash. That is fungible. That is literally buying cash. This is crazy. This is buying tokens that could be used as cash. This is awful. Anyways, uh, that's how their loophole worked. Let's go a little further down that rabbit hole. It's really just a stupid loophole to claim that this is all a sweepstakes and that blackjack, dice, yeah. and roulette are somehow not gambling. Yeah, no, they're exactly gambling. This makes EA and their loot boxes look like rank amateurs. Anyways, let's skip forward a bit here where he talks about how they, uh, they admitted to pivoting. But most interesting, I think, is the admission from the Yada CEO that, quote, yes, this is at odds with the initial mission to encourage savings. Yeah. The savings-based business model wasn't working, so we decided to pivot. So they pivoted to the exact thing that they said they weren't. Unbelievable. In the next m um, moment, he gives the most amazing analogy. This is worth the price of admission. In fact, I'm going to show you how to use the favorite button here. This one right here is getting a favorite because this is brilliant. Take a listen. It's like me starting a methadone clinic only to pivot to selling heroin because that's where the real money is. That is hilarious. God, that was worth it right there just for that moment there. So at 344, yeah, just absolute money. So we'll skip forward a little bit more here where he talks a little bit more about how they went from a savings type app to a casino and the impact YouTube influencers had on promoting this. Honestly, He's right. I do want to help Yada's customers not mm -hmm. getting their money, but I can't ignore that Yada is a savings app that became a casino, the exact thing they were fighting, and that's disgusting. Two, mm -hmm. YouTubers brought people into a financial product that is now broken, and rather than address it, most of them have gone radio silent. Yes, so that's another important point here. He brings up a lot of the people that initially made videos, sponsored videos, and of course they could not have known this up front. But uh, yeah, rather than address it on their channel going, hey, Yada screwed people over or the people that Yada are working with are screwing people over, they just deleted the videos. And yeah, that just that just seems a little bit shady. Anyways, uh, let's go forward a bit here. He's going to talk about YouTubers. And my personal opinion is if you take advice from a YouTuber, I mean, with a huge, huge grain of salt. Now, of course, most of these YouTubers who promoted it had no idea Yada was going to pivot from savings to gambling. Or that Fair. Users' accounts would be frozen. But this is all the more reason that YouTubers should not be getting in the business of promoting financial products, especially finance YouTubers. I've spoken to a lot of these people. Yep. They all tell me the same thing. Oh, I feel so bad. It's not my fault. I had no idea. And that's all fine. But when people bring up your name as an explicit reason they got into this savings account, yeah. it starts to ring a lot more hollow. So there, he says it better than I ever could. But guys, I mean, what, what I think is going to happen, just, just my own personal take on this, is the, the regulatory, uh, I guess the regula regulators are going to come in and they're going to start cracking down on this kind of things because it is very easy to swindle and uh, you know get naive people or alternatively get people that are fully you know up to date and they just you know they put their faith in a youtuber but the youtuber influencer part of me doesn't 
really know what the hell they're talking about in a particular instance. And yeah, it just isn't right. Financial stuff, health stuff, uh, things that can, you know, you know, the Tide Pod crap from the past, those types of things. Yeah, you got to be very careful. And I think the regulators are coming. Uh, let's get forward here to Graham Stephan. He's the one that he really uh, ha takes to task. My brother actually told me about it. I'm pretty sure he found it through the Graham video. That would have been Graham Steph uh, Stephan Graham yeah. video. Graham Stephan's. Graham Stephan video. Graham Stephan came out with a, uh, a video. Graham Stephan, Andre Zeg. Yeah, so he seems to be the worst uh, culprit. Even again, though, he, he is a financial influencer, so maybe he didn't know this was going to happen, but he also, you probably also know better than to pitch this type of thing. I don't know, gray area. But uh, yeah, guys, financial products are different in my personal opinion. And there you go, guys. There it is. So, of course, the link to the whole video is in the description below. The link to my moments are there. I think I got the best of the moments, but you guys might find other moments that were just as good or better. Uh, please let me know what you think of this video in the comments below. Thanks for watching.